it under contract with Paramount for, um, uh, well, basically they were paying me not to do a television series for anybody else. And I had no plans on doing a TV series. It was a way of kind of, you know, I was a young, struggling actor, and they were, you know. So um, one day I heard about this this show called Taxi, and it was with, you know, Jim Brooks and Ed Weinberg and Stan Daniels, David Davis, and I had worked with them on a Mary Tyler Moore show where I did an episode, and and they were they were brilliant, just brilliant writers and brilliant to work with, and. And I thought, now that's a series that I would be interested in because to me it seemed like it would be taking my graduate work or something, you know, that kind of experience in, in comedy and learning about comedy and somewhat about producing and writing and things like that. And um, So um, I went to see them about it and, you know, I thought we were just going to have a meeting and, and and I'm sitting there, uh, 15 minutes goes by, half an hour goes by, 45 minutes goes by, and I'm starting to think, this is a little rude. I mean, you know, and all of a sudden Jim Brooks sticks his head out the door and says, Jeff, this is the only, re the, this, is, this will be the only time you're waiting for an audition while it's being written. And I heard the word audition, and then I thought, wow, well, I'm reading? Nobody told me this, you know? And, and when they handed me the pages, they handed me like 15 pages, and they were still warm. And this is in the old days, you know, and, um, and I said, okay, you ready? I said, ready? You just gave them to me. I haven't had a chance to look them over yet. So, so they said, all right, we're here. We're sorry. So they uh, said, take your time. I took, I don't know, 20 minutes or so to get uh, uh, acquainted with the part. And the part was of John and uh, the part that Randall Carver had played. And... So I read for it, and they, it went really well, and they, they loved it, and you know, they kept on saying, yeah, he's, he's still, you know, he's still there, and months went by, and then all of a sudden, I heard that they'd written some part for an actor named Bobby, and I said, I think that's the part I'd rather do, and we went in, and we had a meeting about it, and they said, we were hoping you feel that way, because we, we felt that that would be the best part for you to do as well, and... Um, you know, we made all sorts of agreements, this and that, and then um, I went up and I, ha I had a test for the network, you know. So the test day came and Ed Weinberger is doing the reading with me and, Ed, I love you, but you're not an actor. And he, he his timing and everything was, it was way off. I mean, I couldn't do what I, I couldn't set up things and, you know, and so... The audition was over, and, and I knew it had gone badly, and I left the room, and I thought, well, that's it's okay, so what big deal? And then Jim Brooks came out running down and said, look, that really wasn't fair. Judd's going to come over and read with you, and we'll do it again. And the second time I did it with Judd, we meshed, you know? We, we, you know, I, we knew the actor's work and the timing and how to play moments, and, and it was very funny, and... Um, they told me not to leave the, the lot. So I went over to Al, Alan Carr's office, and he produced Grease, and I was hanging around over there, and I told them I'd be over there, and they called them, they said, okay, you got it, come on, let's start rehearsal. That, that, because every, they were just waiting to cast that part. And um, so I was the first one seen for it, and the last one seen for it.